how you doing today? Today we're going to work on the garage door. It's a big project, so hang with me. I'll be right back. Let me show you what we're doing. This is a seven foot garage door uh, to a property that I had rented out to a lady and she backed into the door. I don't know if you can see this, but it's pretty bent right here. And we bent it out as good as we could. But I just wanted to show you a quick project that we were going to do. And that is to buy some lithium grease. This is the liquid wrench brand. But it's lithium white lithium grease. And to really help your door out. What you do is come to all these hinges. And spray right here and here. You know here and here. And you got to do those all the way down. And all the way up. You don't need to do that chain. But you do need to do on top of that rail where that little black thing right there slides so you would just clean the top of that rail off and then put some grease you know on the top of it and of course every pulley you have a pulley like that you want to spray it right in there in that pulley and all these wheels right in here and right in here back here in these wheels just use the little you know tube that comes and spray them and of course these hinges here you know right on this side and this side this side this side same with this bar to hold this wheel in now you might have sealed wheels so everything is good you don't want any grease or junk in these wheels maybe just a little bit right there so once again this lithium grease you just put a little bit right on the, the little bar that holds the the wheel right there inside the wheel same with this hinge right here both sides and you do that on all these. Every hinge and every wheel. Not that hard. And maybe just a little bit there. I also went around with a pair of pliers. Made sure that this track, this was pushed in a little bit right here. I just bend it out just a little bit on that curve. So now it all works good. You can also use that lithium grease up on the spring. Once you open the door and that spring collapses, just spray some on there. Make sure you get both of those pulleys or however many pulleys you have or you might have a big spring going across up here that you can spray that grease on just spray a little bit along the back from the top you know and then spray a little bit on the front from the top so it'll drip down the back and it'll drip down the front nice little stream so after we get all that done everything was working great and then wouldn't you know it when stupid door stopped working that little gear busted what timing so then the next project today is putting in the new garage door opener so in order to do that we're gonna have to take off this garage door opener which is old so down at Lowe's I went 128 bucks I've got a Chamberlain and it has a, a couple remotes and it'll have the new door sensors down there. Uh, it also has a keypad for outside, which I don't have. And then it has the little inside one. In order to get this project done, I'll need to take that box down. We're going to take this whole rail down right here. Okay. And we're going to disconnect that bar right there from the door. So once we have all that down, I'll show you what that looks like. Well, the first step to taking down the old unit was is I disconnected this lever and left this bracket on the garage door I think that's gonna swivel up there I may have to take that down you should really have two people doing this one person holding that but I came over to this end and there's only two nuts up here on the bracket one on each side that hold that in place so I've got the ladder positioned the screws are still in it you know but I took the end of the nuts off so I've got the ladder position so hopefully I can hold that up then take the two screws out or the uh, bolts I guess they are and then lower that unit on this ladder because it's kind of heavy as you can see there's the old unit one end is laying on the ground the other end is still attached this is the end of the wires that go to the sensors those are the old sensors make sure you take those off before you go to set that down and uh, also make sure that you unplug the unit so now i just got to move the ladder over there and undo that end 
Now that you got the old unit out laying on the ground, take a moment and look at it. On this unit, that bar right there is a solid piece of bar. On the new unit I bought, it'll be in two foot sections or so. I'll have to put them all together. But they all kind of work the same. You have a little pulley here on one end, and then you have a screw adjustment for the chain down there. Okay? And that would tighten your chain. You don't want to tighten your chain too much, but you'll read about that in the instructions. And then basically you have this little gizmo right here on the chain. And that thing, that's what catches that door lock down here. Okay, and this is this hooks to your door. And so that thing that I showed you hooks in there, but it has a release handle. So if you lost power, you could pull that and still open the door like I showed you. And then once you get down to this side, there's just another gear drive down there that the chain wraps around. And that's where the gear inside busted on the motor. So basically, you should look at this, and even if yours is different, just to kind of familiarize yourself that you know you're going to have to attach it to the wall. Then your chain's going to wrap around, and then it's going to come all the way down. Now you may buy one that has a belt, but it's going to be the same thing. You're just going to have a belt instead of a chain. So next step you're going to do. Just come over here and open up your box, get the all-important instruction manual, go through that once, and make sure you go through the box and look at all these parts, because we're going to have to lay them all out, make sure we got them all, and then start assembling this unit on the ground so it'll look like that. Welcome back. I've gone through all my parts and they seem to be there. So down here in the bottom right I have a control panel that's for the access outside if you want to put in a security code and punch it in I will probably not install that next black box is the, just the regular button you push from inside your house which will open the garage door when you you know do it manually that's an extra roll of wire to connect those two um, that's going to be about the only uh, connections that you're going to have to make other than the door sensors there's two remotes right there uh, it also is Wi-Fi capable, so you can use it with your Android, but I probably won't use that. Those are the black bars that we're going to assemble. Then you have the chain. Then you have the bag of hardware. Then those brackets up there, you can see those. One goes above the garage door to hold that bar when it's assembled, and one goes on top of the unit itself. And then those are the pieces, parts right here that make up that automatic or the manual door release so if you um, lose power you can still open the door by pulling that handle down like I showed you on the other one. The unit itself just has one black plug that you plug into the 110 which is on top of your ceiling and then that little yellow wire is a um, radio wire for the receivers so you don't mean for the transmitters for the remotes so there's nothing else for you to wire other than, I don't know if you can see those, but those are the two sensors. Now you can't really tell my battery ran out so I'm stuck on a cord over here. So those sensors are way smaller than the other sensors and then those brackets right there, which I'll show you a little later, they can either screw into the wall like my old ones or actually clip onto the rail which makes them super easy to install. So you'll just have a little wing nut that'll hold those onto that bracket and those brackets will click in to the rail over there. Welcome back. We're done assembling this rail system. So as you can see, that's the top of the garage door opener that would actually face the ceiling. You can see that the gear drive for the motor, you know, is towards the back. Then you have the adapter to bolt this long pull onto. And on that pull, you have the trolley assembly. There's an inner and outer trolley. Yours may be different. And then it goes all the way down, and I'm still hooked up to a wire, so I can't quite get over to the show you real close. But just make sure that your end and the whole assembly looks exactly like it does in this manual. So what I've done is I put the manual down, and I've double-checked that all the pieces are in the proper place before I go on to the next step of installing the chain. In preparation for putting the chain on, I had to put that black piece there that's called the chain spreader. There's two little screws that go down inside there. I recommend you have a 
magnetic screwdriver. And just in front of this, this uh, piece here, there's a small little bolt right here that you can see. That stops a trolley that has a nut down on the bottom. And then on the other end, we're going to be placing that pulley, the idler pulley. So that's the one end of a cable. On the other end of that cable, I stretched out so it goes all the way over here to the chain. So there's the chain. It has the cable on the end. You have to thread that through the end and then put that little pulley right there with the 3 8 nut. You know, you're going to slide that pulley inside that way and then put the nut down down through it. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. All right, I just thought I'd show you. I'm still connected to this stupid cable to the wall outlet. That's why this is a bad video. But the black bolt goes up through the bottom. I have this now turned on its side so you can see that this is the bottom facing the floor when it's installed. This idler pulley just sits in here and then you have a, a lock washer and a nut and then the cable if you look real close here when you go to do your your uh, chain you got to make sure that it's inside that pulley because when you tighten it up you just want to make sure it's in that track. So we'll get to installing the other end of that chain as I get it out of the bag which is attached to this cable and to do that you'll use that little piece over there Basically, if you remember when you were a kid and you had a little master link, that's what that is. It's a little link with two prongs and a little lock washer. And so now we have the chain installed. We were quite careful not to twist the chain. And we were even more careful when we adjusted that nut up there to make sure it's not too tight or it's just dipping a little bit. Uh, we'll make further adjustments per your instruction. I've also attached the handle to the quick release here so now it slides up and down because I've unlocked it. I did use the bracket that was already there to connect that end so we just did the reverse. We connected that end and then we came over here and we bolted that up in place and as you can see the two covers are open because they have instructions number one and number two there's a light bulb on each place or on each side rather so it's not plugged in yet I've installed light bulbs. I still have to install the bracket for this over on the wall. And then we have some other things to do like the uh, sensors to put on and the door mount before we can test it. Hello everybody. Here we are for the final test. The light is on meaning that these remotes should work because they're pre-programmed. So right now, if you look over there, there's nothing going on. This little button here should turn the light on. And that's what it does. So I have more light in my garage. That'll turn the light off. Okay, so we're going to try this button to program all that stuff. There's a button in here to lock it and to program it. I'm not putting on that pad, so I'm not going to worry about it right at the moment. Let's open it up. Oh. oh, much smoother. If I have something down on the ground, like a kid's head, it's supposed to stop and go back up when it hits it. There's three buttons on this thing. One is for programming and one is for opening and closing. There it goes. Nice. You hook up these little things, if everything is lined up, that little LED light down there beyond on both of them. See that little LED light? So they're both on. So what that should do is, kind of like that other safety feature, if the door is going down and I back into it like that with my foot, it goes back up. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching my videos. I really hope you enjoy them. If you have a comment or a question, leave it in the comments section below. I'll be glad to answer it as soon as I can, or maybe one of my subs will. But remember, please hit that subscribe button that's going to pop up, and YouTube is going to put more videos for you to watch over here. So enjoy yourself, grab the popcorn, and just remember, we really appreciate you being part of our family and subscribing to our channel. All the support you give us has been wonderful. So have a great day, 
and we'll see you on the next video.